the question is find magnetic intensity h at minus 340 due to current filament shown in figure so from the figure the current filament is situated on x axis and z axis and the direction of this current is from plus infinity of z axis towards plus infinity of x axis so this is an infinite current filament from z equals to infinity to x equals to infinity and which carries a current of 3 ampere due to this infinite current filament which carries a current of 3 ampere we have to determine the magnetic intensity h at minus 340 so first we place this point that is minus 340 on this given figure here the x coordinate is minus 3 and y coordinate is 4 while the z is 0 z is 0 means this point is situated on x y plane here x equals to minus 3 and y equals to 4 so this is a point which having coordinate minus 3 4 and 0 so due to this infinite current filament we have to determine the magnetic intensity h at point p and since this infinite current filament is situated on both x axis and z axis that is from z to x so first we break this into two parts first with respect to z and second with respect to x axis so first we consider h1 that is due to current along x and h2 due to current along z so first to determine h1 magnetic intensity h1 due to current filament situated along x axis so we consider an infinite semi infinite conductor that is situated on x axis so we place this semi infinite conductor on the x axis that is started from origin to x equals to plus infinity okay now we place a point p the point p is situated on x y plane but to the negative side of x the first step is we join the ends of this semi infinite current filament so first we um, connect this we connect point p to the origin and second point p to the x equals to infinity so for x equals to infinity we we consider this means this is tends towards infinity and we see to determine the angle alpha we see toward the positive direction of x so from here as we see towards positive direction of x we get angle alpha 1 and alpha 2 so from the figure unit vector l is along the current filament that is toward the positive direction of x while the unit vector rho is the perpendicular distance along the current filament towards the point p so we draw a perpendicular on this semi infinite conductor for this we have to project it towards the negative side and make a 90 degree angle so from this figure we can determine cos alpha 1 and cos alpha 2 cos alpha 1 is magnitude 3 upon hypotenuse that is under root of 4 square plus 3 square that is 3 upon 5 while the cos alpha 2 is 1 how it is possible since this is semi infinite line and as we know that the point end point 
one of the end point of this line tends towards infinity. At this point, as x tends to infinity, the value of rho, that is the distance, perpendicular distance, is very small. So, it seems that angle alpha 2 approaches 0 degree. So, for semi-infinite line, the angle alpha 2 is 0 degree as the perpendicular distance is approaches very small as compared to the length of the semi-infinite line. So, we say that alpha 2 is 0 as x tends to infinity. Similarly, cos alpha 2 is cos 0 that is 1. The next step is to determining unit vector phi that is cross product of unit vector L and unit vector rho. As we represent unit vector L along x axis and unit vector rho that is perpendicular distance toward the point P and from figure we find that unit vector rho is towards y axis. So, we take a cross product of unit vector x and unit vector y that is unit vector z. So, after putting these values that is cos alpha 1 is equals to 3 by 5, cos alpha 2 is 1 and unit vector phi equals to az. The current i is given that is 3 ampere and what is rho? Rho is the perpendicular distance that is also given that is 4. We get the magnetic intensity H1 due to current filament situated along x axis that is H1 equals to 23.88 unit vector z milliampere per meter. Similarly, we can determine the magnetic intensity H2 due to current filament that is situated along z axis. So, in this case, we consider a semi-infinite current filament that is situated on z axis. Current is flowing from z equals to infinity to 0, 0, 0 that is towards origin. So, we represent a semi-infinite line on the z axis and the direction of current is from z equals to infinity to origin. And we have to determine the magnetic intensity H2 at point P. So, we represent a point P. The point P is situated on xy plane, but the coordinate is, the x coordinate is negative, that is minus 3. So, the first step is connecting the ends of this semi-infinite line. As the point P is situated on xy plane and z axis is perpendicular to xy plane, so, it again becomes a right angle triangle after joining the end po ends points of semi-infinite line. And we see towards the positive direction of z, we get the alpha 1 and alpha 2 angle. Now, since the point P is situated on xy plane and z is normal to this plane, the angle alpha 1 is 90 degree and what about alpha 2 as this is semi infinite line and z is tends towards infinity and the alpha 2 is approaches 0 because the perpendicular distance that is rho rho is very small as compared to the infinite line that is semi-infinite line. So, this alpha 2 approaches 0. So, after putting the value of alpha 90 degree and alpha 2 equals to 0 as z tends to 0, cos alpha 1 becomes 0 and cos alpha 2 is equals to 1. The next step is to determining the unit vector phi. For unit vector phi, we take a cross product of unit vector L and unit vector rho. For unit vector L, it is along the current filament. So, unit vector L from this figure 
we find that it is negative direction of unit vector z and unit vector rho for unit vector rho we have a vector rho so vector rho so from the figure the vector rho has two components x component is minus 3 and y component is plus 4 so vector rho is equals to minus 3 unit vector x plus 4 unit vector y and its magnitude is rho that is under root 3 square plus 4 square that is under root 25 that is 5. So after determining the vector rho we can write unit vector rho. The unit vector rho is vector upon its magnitude. So unit vector rho is minus 3 unit vector x plus 4 unit vector y upon 5. Now you take a cross product. So first term is the cross product of minus unit vector z cross minus unit vector x and its cross product is unit vector y. Here minus minus is positive and unit vector z cross unit vector x is unit vector y. The second term is the cross product of minus unit vector z and unit vector y. So unit vector z cross unit vector y is minus of ax and here there is a minus so minus minus is plus so again we get a plus unit vector x so unit vector phi is min, uh, 3 upon phi unit vector y plus 4 upon phi unit vector x after determining these values cos alpha 1 cos alpha 2 and unit vector phi we have to put in formula that is h2 vector is equal to i upon 4 pi rho cos alpha 2 minus cos alpha 1 here rho rho is perpendicular distance that is along a current filament towards the point p so the we know the vector rho and its magnitude is phi the rho is phi after putting these values we get the answer that is h2 vector that is magnetic intensity due to current filament along z is 38.2 unit vector x plus 28.65 unit vector y milliampere per meter. So the total magnetic intensity h is equal to h1 plus h2 that is due to current filament starting from z equals to infinity towards x equals to infinity we get the answer that is 38.2 unit vector x plus 28.65 unit vector y plus 23.88 unit vector z milliampere per meter. So in this way we can determine the magnetic field intensity at any point due to a current filament by using Byard's Service Law and here the main point is how to determining the angle alpha 1 and alpha 2. For determining angle alpha, we have to see towards the positive direction of the line where the line current filament is situated. And the unit vector rho is always perpendicular to this current filament and the direction is towards the point P.